praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters a warm welcome to one and all of you and i greet you in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ it gives me a great pleasure as always that we stay united as one i won't say community or religion as one people of god and we don't atlas bible doesn't discriminate anyone by caste or religion or gender or the color of the skin or whatever jesus is universal god and he is god to everyone and he loves everyone and he died for everyone and the fact remains the same the truth remains the same even after these many years and if many people are going to ask you this question no oh, this is western god he they came he came to introduce religion and all that then you should go to genesis 3:15 which was written in less than 100 years by god it was told right that's what the historians say all this incident of disobedience and eating the fruit and stuff like that it would have happened in the first few years itself and that point of time how many religions were there how many languages were there how many people were there there are only two religion one is male religion second is female religion that's it and to both of them there was just one god his name is yahweh right is it this is all man made and if i were to talk about the legacy of this religion i have given this um details in one of the sessions i don't remember which of these sessions right the fallen angels each one of them are part of lucifer's army and their important task and objective is to deceive people and the best source of deception is none other than deviating people in the name of religion therefore each one of them decided to become gods and goddesses not only here in india across even during the days of paul when he went to places like ephesus philippi ephesus was having this god great goddess diana and there were people who did not even eat for 3 days and 3 night why because their only intention is to sacrifice false blood to their great goddess diana you understand where all where all these concepts came from who all in, who all introduced it was not god right god genesis 3:15 the third chapter in the book of god the first book third chapter as early as the world was formed and in a few years this incident takes place and you see god is all disheartened and then he introduces jesus as the universal god as the universal son of god who would be sent to this world and he is responsible for all the mankind's redemption deliverance yes and therefore no one will go to hell that's exactly the point but then under one condition one disclaimer every knee shall bow to him and every tongue shall confess that jesus is the lord of lords and king of kings this world how is it operating beloved why are you getting so offended when we say that you have to accept jesus as your savior show that respect and honor and therefore you inherit his grace for free you inherit his deliverance his resurrection power blessed assurance and resurrection power and the blessed hope everything for free but you would not accept or bow down and show that respect and honor to the blood that was shed for you and me then this was not going to be given that's the only simple condition why are you getting so offended so let me ask you a question how does this world operate i keep telling you giving you this bank example right if you approach a bank for loan they ask you for any kind of mortgage documents any guarantee that you could you know furnish as documentation as proof evidence or proof of evidence uh, that you are going to repay the loan that you are not going to abscond that you are not going to cheat the bank and if you, even if you would cheat the bank they have their those mark, mortgage documents verified and your pay slips verified and they will approach your employer they will approach um, you know selling your property or confiscating your property something like that right so when the world is operating that you give you provide the guarantee you give and then take you provide the guarantee and then you take the loan 
Yes? You give that assurance and convince us that you are capable to repay this loan and then yes, you have the loan. This is the way how world operates. Why? Because that's how the law is all about, right? It's not about... The world operates in matter of trusting your positions, trusting your property. The Bible operates in trusting you blindly for whoever you were, for whatever you had been into. But when you come into Jesus and accept him, Bible trusts you blindly. Heaven trusts you blindly and rolls down that red carpet. Please walk on that red carpet and you're welcome to this kingdom. But you need to accept Jesus. See, it's the other way around, right? You give up all your egos and pride and, pride and stuff like that. You don't have to furnish anything as proof or documentation, nothing, no assurance. But only that spirit of acceptance, that mind <clears throat> to accept the Savior, right? To accept God as your Savior, accept Jesus as your Savior. And that's why this Bible is very special. It doesn't allow um, anybody to sacrifice their blood, their children and all that, right? That God of Molech, they demanded their children to be walking in the fire, on the fire and yeah, blood has to be shed and yeah, the children had to be, uh, what to say, um, kind of strangled, uh, str str you know, uh, to death and or, or beheaded, that blood has to be a sacrifice to Molech as a sacrifice, as a yearly sacrifice, something like that. Yearly one children at least per family will have to sacrifice. And even to this day, many Indian culture, they follow that. Not only in Indian culture, many tribes in the world. All right, so I'm just telling you, there is no religion that we preach here, but we talk about Jesus who died for you, who died for me, who died for this world. Every single one of us who had been born and every single baby that are yet to be born, Jesus died. You believe it or not, you accept it or not, the truth and facts, um, they are the same. They, they, they just don't change. All right, so warm welcome to this series where we are dealing through the subject of... Uh, 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 spiritual composition of human heart or you can call it as spiritual composition of of human beings and we classified or kind of fragmented into four different quadrants number one is body second is mind and third one would be spirit and fourth one would be soul somebody is going to asking me where is the holy spirit the holy spirit is outside of these you welcome him you will become the spirits, your spirit's partner and he will admonish, he will exhort, he will guide, he will help you all the time because he's the helper and your companion. Bible says in John 14, 16, you welcome him in the name of Jesus. See, for as that's why I spent little time, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You would not confess it. You're not into the spiritual doctrines and you're not going to get the Holy Spirit as your helper, free helper. Yeah. See, anybody in this world could go anywhere and get this wisdom and knowledge for free. Go anywhere and try it out. You won't get it. There's one person who is offering, offering it for free and his name is Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 to 11. Spirit of knowledge and spirit of wisdom is given as gift for free. Yes, you have to just acquire it. Is there any parent in, the, in this room that, oh my... Son is not having enough knowledge at all. Whatever he studies, he's forgetting. My daughter is not having enough wisdom. Wherever she goes, she is getting fooled. Yes, you please get them to the Lord. Get them, get them to uh, the doctrines of the Bible, and I'll, you know, request you to accept Christ as your Savior, and you will find the difference in them. Yeah, you will see that they walk, start walking in light. So we had been dealing through the various subjects and one of the prime subjects we had been still analyzing was from the life of prodigal son but before which I want to just get you reminded on this verse where we are stuck for so many sessions now. This is our 10th or 11th session. I'm not sure. Yes, more, not even more than that. Why? Because we 
spoke on the basics. We spoke from the life of Matthew, Zacchaeus, the subject of unpardonable sin, right? And this was our 77th session uh, since the time we kicked off this series and we had been dealing through various subjects, various various subjects in the sense um, every parameter that's going to be connecting with the spiritual composition. Spiritual composition deals with body and mind that are connected to the earthly life, worldly matters, right? worldly expositions, and the spirit and soul, much to do with the spirit-related matters, spirit-related affairs, spirited life, spiritual warfare, decision makers, who governs the body and mind. Many people, always they focus on the externals. They always think, um, look at the way how he talks, look at the way how he walks, look at the way how she dresses. You're looking at the externals, but what is inside of you proceeds outside of you. And about on which we spoke, um, you know, when we dealt with untamable tongue series. Understand? Therefore, I want you to always get reminded of these doctrines in the Bible and what the world calls as unpardonable sin. In the eyes of the God, they are pardonable. And that's what we had been dealing through from the Word of God and helping you to understand, giving you that light and understanding. And you don't have to live your life in guilt conscious. You don't have to live your life carrying that load of baggage, saying my sins are not going to be forgiven. I was such a worse sinner and all that. No. God calls you towards forgiveness because that's his heart. Bible says that he remembers your sin no more. He forgives all your unrighteous, unholy deeds. But again, I say the one disclaimer is you got to accept his son who was sent to this world to be laid on the cross as our sacrifice. The lamb without blemish was laid on the cross. 1 Peter 1.19, 1 Peter 3.18, Hebrews 2.18. All these verses, if you take and read, you will understand Jesus was crucified and he purchased us for a price, shedding his precious blood. 1 Corinthians 6.20 and Bible demands that honor, that respect, that acceptance, more than respect and honor, that acceptance. Yes, you acknowledge, else it becomes a meaningless sacrifice. It becomes a sacrifice that means nothing to many. Right. So we are dealing through this various subjects and one of them, I mean, such as like, to give you a sneak peek, if you have not gone to all the 70 plus sessions uh, or 75 plus sessions, you I'm just giving you a sneak peek. We spoke from the second Corinthians three glory in the new covenant, second Corinthians five reconciliation and uh, blessed assurance in the resurrection, resurrection power of Christ. And uh, we spoke from Ecclesiastes 3, God-given task and about the worldly task and uh, uh, I mean earthly duties and responsibilities versus spiritual duties and responsibilities. We spoke through all of these. Yeah. And God is gracious that he had been leading us beautifully through all of these systematic lessons and systematic teachings from the Bible, which you barely get anywhere outside. Yeah. Nobody has time. Everyone is busy, especially Christendom is very busy these days. Too many meetings, too many discussions, too many fastings, and but they don't have time to meditate from the word of God. They don't, very less teachers, very few teachers are available today. Preachers, yes, too many, jumping on the stage and you know, with a cracking noise, they crack jokes and stuff like that, and they tickle people and make them to laugh. Such kind of preachers. Comedians are available today, but very less teachers who speak from the word of God, teach the scriptures. You can call them as rabbis. Yes, Indian rabbis are missing today. And that's why you will see that the Christendom is, has become so lazy. Christendom has become so very casual. You go to some of the teenage camps and meetings and so-called, what is that, youth meetings, etc. You will see a lot of funny things happening there. It's like a team building program that you see in the corporate world. I work for corporate and I know what it is. And I have led many of the programs like that myself. And that's part of my job. I have to build the team, bring, bring that kind of interpersonal and promote that intrapersonal skills and communication skills and 
break their egos and this is all part of the communication program and team building program this is what exactly is happening in Christendom today 90 percentage of the churches are operating this way I'm talking about the teens I'm talking about the youngsters young people wasting their time plenty of time being wasted and how about the mid-aged and elders they're sitting in the middle of the church and sleeping boring messages sermons and yawnings and yeah the Bible teachings must be conducted in a fashion which is continuous progressive yeah that's why we always teach Bible in a kind of a series either short series or long lengthy series this is the lengthiest series that you could ever find in the playlist or the channel what we have okay I'm just justifying right why you need to have that tremendous patience and seriousness and curiosity to learn from the Word of God because that's the only source of learning that's the only method to learn the scriptures whoever you may be believer non-believer Catholic brother and CSI sister who you you can be whoever but the method remains the same yes the underlining principle remains the same all right we had been dealing from the subject of the unpardonable sin mark 3:28. assuredly assuredly i say to you i'm just turning my bible jesus said this all sins will be forgiven the sons of man and where whatever blasphemies they may utter and this is exactly what you hear from two different people extremists the charismatics and pentecost and spiritual churches no way God will forgive. He's very strict God, angry God, and all that. Yes, He is definitely very strict God, righteous God. But then He's gracious God and compassionate God too. And He's ready to forgive, provided you come to repentance. You want to understand the rep between repentance and difference between repentance and regret? We covered that in the reconciliation series when we spoke from the Second Corinthians chapter five. You have to go through those sessions. We have described in short tense. Regret, you feel sorry, but you're ready to repeat the mistakes. Repentance, you feel sorry enough and you want to stop there. You don't want to sin again. You want to say no to the sin. And James 4, 7 says, those who shall love the Lord will resist the devil and he shall flee away from me or flee away from you. When you resist the devil, he will not flee away from me, right? He will flee away from you. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. It's singular. Okay, it's personal and singular. And how that happens when you come to realization and realization leads you to repentance and repentance leads you to saying no permanently and quitting that habit in which you were addicted for so many decades. I'm not a saint. Yeah, I had been there. One of some of the sinful deeds lingering to my heart. One good example is I was quick to get angry, short tempered. It took me decades to defeat that very, very sensitized to things. And God redeemed me. And it took decades. That's what I'm trying to tell you, right? Never ever believe in that preaching. Oh, today you come to Jesus, jump into the tank. Let's get water baptized. And tomorrow morning you are a born again. Yes, you are a born again Christian. All things have passed away. You are a new creation in Christ. But then, that is related to the spirit. Your spirit is renewed. But not your body and mind. Your body and mind are still having that kind of exposition to the world and they had been soaked in the sinful deeds for a very very long time and they are not going to tune their brains eyes and ears to the voice of the spirit it's going to take them some time and about which we spoke in the initial first to 15 lesson 1 to lesson 15 we have spoken through these very clearly that's why you should go through the series in a chronological order that's why we are numbering no one two is there anybody who doesn't know numerics yeah, send me your phone number. I will teach you numerics and mathematics. The little that I know. <laughs> Don't pick up some classes in the middle and start doing things. Now what calls what what the world calls as unpardonable sin, unforgiven, and the world and the devil is master in reminding you of all the sinful deeds you did. Yes? He will keep reminding you. Hey, you were like this six years ago. You did this to that brother ten years ago. And what you should say, yes, I did. God never remembers and he had forgiven me. 
and it doesn't bother me anymore who are you talk in the same language as he spoke to somebody when they came to resist him or drive him out of a person who was demon possessed i know paul i know jesus but who are you in the similar way you ask i know my god who forgive me i know about me uh, i'm least bothered because holy spirit is dwelling in me who are you and the devil will flee each time he reminds you of those sinful deeds of the past you have to resist the devil this way are you all learning something no huh? all right so on the same lines we had been discussing from the life of matthew zacchaeus uh, the tax collectors whom the world called at them as the chief of the sinners and saul the chief of the murderers before he became paul adulterous women about to be stoned to death the one inch away from death <laughs> because they were ready to condemn her punish her justify her judge her kill her but all of these people were forgiven and accepted by god and we spoke from the life of peter life of those uh, uh, thieves and one of the thief, thief came to repentance and what happened to him and now we are discussing from the life of the prodigal son yes and if you look at this parable very clearly the prodigal son parable very clearly you will observe many things and about which we have spoken a lot in the last few sessions quick recap is he was younger son and he was very young yeah and his father was very rich now he wants the portions to be divided and he says give me my portion and he plays this that petition without any mannerism without any respect without any reverence it's like shopping list many christians approach the throne room of god so called their prayer time yeah that's what they call it as but <laughs> it's up to you to judge what time is that right you really call it as prayer time when you go to god with a shopping list and this guy goes there and asks the father father i need my life stocks to be divided my livelihood to be and divided and stump something like that and father asks him no questions because he ignored all the teachings of the father father would have admonished him and told him everything what is the difference between good and bad but none of those worked and father forwarded the petition to the lucifer stable and the lucifer guy see when father is not willing to do something he's not going to do it all by himself he's going to allow the devil to do that job why because you haven't understood god yes and his his heart is broken and no one can force god emphatically deliberately push him shake his throne give me this god would not do that neither would he curse you but then your judgment is reserved why ecclesiastes 35 315 sorry and matthew 12 36 says that you have to give an account of everything that you do in this world in the last days of judgment and you got to be very careful about this right you 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 just don't understand these things right many times you ask of a petition but you do not know who is provisioning that petition or who is answering that petition you will see, you will just ultimately see oh the petition is being fulfilled and answered but have you really gone to god back and said did you fulfill that petition god or did you forward it to the devil's table and allowing him to fulfill that petition because you were not willing to sanction this petition did you ever go back to god and check immediately you will say hallelujahs and praise the lords and amens and you will be getting to the feasting mode and all that such christians are called as dull hearted christian right they definitely are not shrewd and smart and wise getting back to their god and asking did you give me this did you send your servant to deliver this need what i had asked and you know our god is the god of truth he is going to say no i did not you had never understood my love you never asked for my will but you were very busy in throwing this shopping list right on my face and i didn't like it but i didn't want to curse you disappoint you because you anyway wanted it deliberately therefore i would allow it to happen 
And this time, it's not me who is giving, but I allowed the devil to give that to you because I have nothing to do with this petition. And if the devil is going to bless you, he blesses all his people, right? Whoever worships him, they are all rich and they are all, many people are healthy, bodybuilders, many people live long, right? But after all this, what will be their destiny? Those that live long and healthy and uh, practicing that yoga and breathing exercise and ultimately living for 100 years. What would be their end destiny? Where would they reach? Which place they go to eternity? They do not know that. Know that. That's how they are fooled. Many people are intellectuals. Bible says those who shall worship the, uh, the devil, they will be very shrewd. In the parable of that person uh, who had been uh, uh, caught red-handed, through that malpracticing incident, the master would say, you know, leave my company. And then he goes and canvases all his customers and makes the bill to camouflage it, right, manipulate it, right, and all that. At the end of that parable, you will see Jesus saying this, you know, the, the son of uh, men are, or, or I he would say the mankind is very, very shrewd. And that's what he said. You are very shrewd, God says. Another verse says, God is also very shrewd to you. He knows how you are clever answering God. Uh, very shrewd and clever. God also knows how to be shrewd and clever. And he will necessarily not come and uh, explain it all the ways how we had been shrewd and clever. But you are assuming that you made God to answer. It's not God who answered. But it was the devil which was allowed by God to answer your petition. Why? Because your petition deserves only to be answered by the devil and your petitions answers deserves to proceed from the tables or from the from lucifer's desk not from god's desk if that is what you are assuming each time your petitions are answered but ultimately one fine day you will realize you end up in disaster then you will be scratching your head rolling on the floor huh? and then you go end up in fasting prayers visiting this pastor that prophet that prophetess Oh, tell me, why did God allow all of these? Knowing that this would end up in disaster. God did not allow it. Yes? And the proof is here. He divided them, his livelihood. No, uniting is God's method. Dividing is Mr. Lucifer's method. Divide and conquer. Divide and rule. These were the doctrines of the Roman um, uh, you know, what is a Roman uh, military and British government, all of these people, wherever they went and captured, they divided and ruled. They divided and conquered. God's method is unite, be unified, one body, one spirit, one soul, one you know, as one community, be strong and worship the Lord. That is God's method. And you have not understood this basic difference, pity on you. And that's why the father did not resist. He said, fine, take it. Then verses 13 to 17, if you take and read. Um, actually, we didn't even finish verse 17 yet. The guy spends all his money yeah, with all the best of his companions and friends and all that. And he got all the nasty ideas from all of these guys. And when the money is spent, all of them fled the spot. And this guy is left all alone having no food and then he doesn't want to kill himself good decision that's the only thing i would appreciate with this younger son and we will deal with this right we, we have a lot of principles to learn and then he decides to work and earn and then he goes and asks for some job and one of the citizens makes him to feed the swine and he ends up eating whatever the swine had been fed right because no one was ready to offer him anything and neither was he neither was he willing to beg because why he always had that pride and that conscience conscience in his heart that who his father was that never went off from his heart that never uh, got erased from his heart yes and therefore um, he just started he ended up eating that but when he came to himself verse number 17 that's what we had been discussing in our last session right when he came to himself is when he means he, he came back to his senses both the spiritual sense and common sense and he decides 
to ask this reasonable question. Beloved, always you need to ask this question. Yeah? Why you need to ask this question is, the Holy Spirit will clearly help you to understand the post consequences of your decision. You're all very, very playful to make up that petition, that list of things and just go to God and ask him as if he is the shopkeeper. Give me two kgs of salt and one kg of sugar and this and that, like that, right? Give me one car and this job promotion. Give me a good wife and two children. You bless me and all that. Go with the shopping list, right? But have you ever sat and asked the Holy Spirit to help you understand what kind of petitions these are? Are these reasonable in the sight of God? Are these going to meet and match up with the divine will and plan of God? Have you ever sought the Holy Spirit before approaching the throne of God? The Holy Spirit is going to help and that's his role. His role is to admonish you, to guide you, to lead you in the path of wisdom and help you making the right decision. You never do it, then you always end up in trap. What? You, your petitions will be still answered, but not from God. He allows the devil to answer and the tempter is activated. The tempter is at work. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he allows the tempter, but still he's merciful, but still God is gracious. He says, I will not allow the tempter to tempt you beyond what you could bear. And he will make, and he will make ways to escape. Why? Somewhere in the course of, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the course of going through the temptation, in the journey of the temptations, while you are being provisioned on this ways to escape, would you not somehow come back to senses? That's the compassion of the Father. Yeah, that good He is. That's why Bible calls Him as good God. All His plans for us are not for evil, but for our good, Bible says. He is good God. He who began the good work in you will complete it. Philippians 1, 6 and Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. And He will search our hearts and minds and then only He is going to provide everything that's needed. Bible says that in Jeremiah 17, 10, I think, and Jeremiah 24, 7 also talks about the condition of your heart. God spends enough time in researching your heart. And therefore, he allows the tempter. And he's going to teach you such a lesson that you're going to learn through hard ways. So after he came back to his senses, now he makes a very important statement and that's the turning point in his life. All of us like turning points, right? Turning points. What is turning point? You think you're going the right direction towards this destination A, but then almost when you reach destination A, you find it out it's destination B. Because why? You took the wrong route. Therefore, there is a point where you need to make a new make a U-turn or maybe deviate, turning point, turn toward towards the right direction, right side of your life. Do the right things in your life. All of us go through such moments in our lives, don't we? I've gone through. You will. You would have definitely gone through. And each one of us have got our own testimonies in life to do such things. So, you and I will have to not look to learn things through these turning points, but why don't you change your principle from turning point to starting point? What it takes for you to just check it out before you even switch on your vehicle, right? Check the map, confirm with somebody, turn around and ask somebody, hey, is this the route that takes me to destination A, right? And somebody is going to tell you, no, no, or somebody is going to tell you, hey, after 10 miles, you got to take a right. Although the signboards may show that you need to go straight, but you got to take, you know, the deviation from whatever place. Yes, and if you abide by these rules, then what happens is your journey is very smoother. You don't have to go through any difficulties. You don't waste time. You don't waste your effort. You don't waste your energy. All of these things seems to be um, churning good results, right? You don't waste time, you don't waste energy. What happens? You end up doing things in a very productive way. 
That's exactly what God wants you to do in your life. Now, who is giving you that sluggish attitude? Yeah, all those confidence. The world offers a lot of confidence. No problem. You commit mistakes. Let's learn from the mistakes. Bible says even before you would commit a mistake, why don't you turn around and ask your helper? While the helper is ready to help you, why would you look for an opportunity to commit mistakes and then learn through those mistakes? Don't you think that this has been uh, provisioned? This kind of ideas are being provisioned through those uh, under the who falls who fall who would fall into the category of demonic wisdom? James chapter three verses. 13 to 18 talks clearly on about which we preach from the, uh, I mean, it's available in the Untamable Tongue series. So, beloved, what I'm trying to say here is, if you are a true believer in Christ, if you're a very serious person walking in the footprints of our Lord Jesus, learning from his life, and you pay attention to these epistolic teachings and apostolic teachings and all the 27 books in the New Testament and the remaining books in the Old Testament. You will not be a person who would look for turning points in life. Why? Because by the time you have reached a turning point, you have already spent X amount of energy and efforts and you have lost every single possible resource. For example, you wasted plenty of time and money and efforts. And therefore, you don't get all of these back. But then you will have to again invest your time, again invest your energy, efforts. This is exactly what the devil does in especially the Christian's life, right? You know, life of the believers. For 20 decades, for not 20 decades, for two or three decades, they end up being part of um, a Christian congregation thinking, this is the church which God gave me and stuff like that, not having understood the sermons that they had been listening were proceeding from the mouth of a false prophet and he is that wolf hiding in sheep's clothing. Then what happens? You have to redo all the exercises. This was the condition of Saul before he became Paul. He went to Arabia, right? And he mentioned that in Galatians 1.17, right? He went to Arabia from Damascus and he spends enough time there, almost three years he spent there. Yeah, And then he returns back again to Damascus as a re renewed person. Person rejuvenated, refreshed. But had he spent all the efforts that he had put forth in that institute or the Bible college that had been run by, um, uh, who's that, Gamaliel, uh, I think by this, he would have already become Jesus' disciple. And he doesn't have to spend that effort again. So today learn this principle that if you are that Christian walking in the footprints of Jesus, you will look for starting points. You will spend enough efforts. You will be that smart Christian. You will be that wise Christian. Spending enough efforts, asking God whether you are heading towards the right direction. If not, God stop me right now and here. Let's end it up. Right? Or... You would have already discovered that this is not the divine will and plan of God. This is not the purpose why God called you. Many people end up as ministers and evangelists. While God's calling was not that, God's calling would have been completely different. Many people end up in teaching Bible, picking up the mics and all that, and they bore people and they put them to sleep. And the believers in the church sleep like babies. Why? Because that's not the calling of the brother. Why? Because he never focused neither on starting point or turning point. At least good, this guy, the younger son, had a turning point in his life. And he had put in conscious efforts, yes, to realize that he has reached to the turning point. Many people even bypass the turning point and they've gone far ahead and far beyond even the destination A. While God's calling was them to head towards destination B. And they've gone far beyond Beyond, you understand, right? They even crossed destination A and they were heading towards searching for, ah, where is my Messiah? Like how Jewish folks are still searching for their Messiah. Messiah is yet to come and all that, right? Messiah came and he went. 2,000 years passed away. And the power 
in the resurrection uh, the resurrection power of jesus is at work and the power in the blood of jesus is at work and the power in the name of jesus is at work but they don't want to inherit these promises who are they third category foolish people right who fooled them devil bible says our fight is not with the blood and flesh but with the principalities and powers of darkness is you all understand what i'm saying huh? we all go through these situations and incidents at some point of time uh, some point of time in our lives and therefore we got to learn these principles we got we got to learn and correct come back to god yeah and our god is the one who instills that reproof and corrections and gets us back to track is what proverbs 6:23 says and proverbs 3:11 12 he chastises you don't listen to his soft ways of corrections and him reproof then he teaches you things through hard hard ways and he starts beating you badly which is better for you which is good news if god is beating you he loves you so much that's what it means proverbs 3:11 and 12 you read you will understand which is truly in times worse if god decides to walk away from your life because why you are not paying attention neither on the starting point nor on the turning point what kind of person you are completely fooled and deceived by the demonic forces and you are on the demon side and you love it there are many many people who love to be busy bodies always you ask them i'm busy with church activities what is your destiny destiny is a but then yeah they have gone towards b or destiny is b they have gone towards a It's not God's will that you should be very busy in church activities. God called you for a different purpose. Probably a prayer warrior who is supposed to sit inside four walls. Like how John the Apostle was sent to the you know, land of Patmos. Whereas Paul's calling was to be the traveler. He went to so many places in Europe. The whole of Europe is saved because of... I wouldn't necessarily call it as saved. But then the gospel was preached. through this apostle paul that was his calling imagine if they interchanged the position paul was sent to the land of patmos and john being sent to all this countries of europe it would have been a massive failure the mission would have been a failure because god knows our skills our strengths our talents our capabilities accordingly he implants he tells us this is what is your vision this is what is the divine will and plan i have for you this is that these are the targets these are your tasks and that's what we covered in god given task but this younger fellow failed to ask god he did not check on his starting point before he got his positions had he asked god or or his father father i have plans of spending it this way i want to have some fun entertainment and invest in that business what do you think he never checked on him right now the good news is at least now he realizes there is a turning point in my life let me make use of this turning point at least many christians don't even make use of the turning points that god permits in their lives he permits turning points through chastisements he beats you so hard that you would stop your journey that you would stop marching forward heading towards that wrong destination being involved in those bunch of wrong activities or tasks or anything that you do and you know what bible calls you as if you don't do things according to the will of god you are a busy body brother you're just wasting your time busy bodies you know who they are you will see them at 9 o'clock in this house 10:30 a.m they'll be in that, that house 11 a.m they'll go to church and 12 a.m they will 12 p.m they'll go here and then you will see them in coffee shop and then coming back home having dinner uh, sorry lunch and then they rest for some time and then again you will see them ultimately you ask them what did you do they would say that i end up visited visiting you know 20 friends and three relatives and spent 30 minutes in church and 10 minutes in bible reading you check the condition of their soul you will see their soul is in garbage state not soul spirit right Sp- soul would never end in, end end in garbage said because it's image of god but then the soul is the witnessing agent and soul will be judged the inner man will be judged according to the deeds of the spirit and the spirit is misguiding the body and mind who's giving instruction back to the body and mind body and mind says hey come i feel 
very excited going to pub and the spirit says if it is on the side of holy spirit if holy spirit is spirit's partner it will say no those who shall defile the temple of god god shall destroy them bible says in 13 uh, 1 corinthians 317 it will say no i'm not allowing you all the body and mind they are not very happy they have no choice because why they don't have the capacity to decide things on their own they rely on spirit and spirit also doesn't have capacity to decide things on his own therefore he relies on holy spirit or evil spirit if he was relying on the evil spirit side what would evil spirit say wow this is a fantastic opportunity what a feast it is going to be come let's go to pub spend the whole night there yeah drink like a pig and come back home and next day morning you wake up and you will see your head is as heavy as the bucket filled with water and you know when you would wake up 1 pm in the noon what kind of life is this demon possessed life you say the same thing to the world they would call you as a person of insanity you are not a human being you don't know how to enjoy your life and all that why that's exactly what we are dealing what world calls it as fun bible calls it as sin what world calls it as sin and whatever bible calls it as the best way of leading your life you know what world calls it as sin they call you as a religious fanatic if you go by these doctrines and they will say no in a democratic country you just cannot speak to us like this according to them it's sin by the law they will judge you maybe you will be thrown into jail Now this guy realizes the turning point how many of my father's hired servants see when you reach the turning point you will be speaking with all your common sense with all your spiritual sense and at least focus on your turning point if you have missed your starting point but the best method for every christian would be check on the starting point check your google map yes or if your google map knows network is network coverage is there turn around ask the locals or keep asking the locals every 10 miles you keep checking with the locals and who is that local for you in your spiritual life our dear friend holy spirit keep checking with them okay fine you failed to check on the starting point or you start you you checked on the starting point but all along the way never rush in confidence i know brother this is from god let me do this anyhow don't do that every 10 miles at every single point every single incident every single event in your life have the habit to always have that association preserve that association do not allow that association to be delinked through the deception of the devil yeah the devil will absolutely misguide you and make you to head towards destination b and you would have not even realized the turning point why because you were in the, under the assumption that all is well some not necessarily all the time god will you know spend his time and energy to instill that reproof corrections instructions chastisement and all that not necessarily because why it he did that many times but you are not learning from the past and therefore he will not strive with the spirit of man forever neither will he hold his anger because why he who just kindled his anger a new testament anger of god you know what he won't send fire from heaven and burn you to death he will just walk away from your life handing you over to the hands of satan and he doesn't have to do that when he walks away from your life that's enough for the satan wow fantastic opportunity this is exactly what i want to what i was waiting to happen in this fellow's life and he comes and takes complete he possesses bible says demon possessed people and ever imagine uh demon possessed people will be pulling off their hairs and having the eyes wide open and they will start taking a blade and start cutting their skin and all that no nothing at all you won't even know that you're demon possessed you will be so gentle well dressed but your lifestyle will determine which which side you are how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough than to spare and i perish with hunger now he understands the difference between living under the shadow of his father's wings right how safety it was how secure it was how blessed it was how luxurious it was oh what a fool i am that i had missed all of those that i never 
paid enough attention of whatever i had enjoyed and now i had to lose all of these for no reasons but of one reason is deception he re he realizes that he was deceived and that makes him to talk and that helps him to understand the key differences between the blessings acquired from the father's table versus the curses that you receive from the devil's table now we understand why it is important to check whether the lord god almighty sanctioned that petition from his table or he forwarded that petition to the devil's table because that this is this will be the end you will end up in disaster and it will be too late because why you have already paid a heavy price you already sacrifice everything you don't want to do that that's not god's wish or desire that you should learn things through hard ways many people don't understand this right i will arise now then verse number 18 let's let's move a little faster because we have to close this um i'm not very confident to close this in this session but at least we will cover from the younger son's perspective i will arise and go to my father i will say to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you now his spirit comes to realization his spirit comes to repentance his spirit is willing to partner with the holy spirit his spirit is willing to fix things of the past his spirit spirit is willing to obtain the forgiveness from the father and guide this body and mind in the right direction aren't we dealing from those lines absolutely we are discussing on that yes and he arose that's what bible says now sorry sorry i will arise he was still thinking he was making the yeah he makes certain decisions there is a difference the principle that you have to learn here is when you decide you have to implement you have to execute it some people decide i'm still thinking on that brother i'm waiting for the calling of god brother i'm still praying about it brother you will meet them the previous year they say the same thing you meet them the next year they say the same thing you meet them after decade they say the same thing this is the state of many christians today are you one of those this session is for you now this guy decides i will arise and go to my father in the sense i will arise and i will say no to the devil henceforth i will resist the devil and for henceforth i'll be dead to the sins of the past i will never go back again which means what i think he's ready for water baptism <laughs> yes i will arise and go to my father and get baptized in the water that's what he meant to say and will say to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you yes i have sinned against heaven which means what from heaven jesus came and you have dishonored him neither have you understood the love of the father nor have you heard the voice of the holy spirit who was screaming aloud deep from within you right you never heard him you ignored him you heard him but he ignored him you said no to him or maybe the devil fooled you in such a way that he made you believe that the devil is the holy spirit and the holy spirit is the devil you interchanged their roles and you did it all by yourself this was not from god this was not from god <laughs> that's a point his tone changes his language changes his decision changes his lifestyle changes his habitual practices changes his love for god is renewed refreshed yes and you see what a statement i will arise and go to my father and i will say to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you and i am no longer worthy to be called your son he is ready to even sacrifice his position what a spirit of see is not only a person who had come and come to light and repentance and has the attitude of reconciling with his father but he is also ready to sacrifice his position that tells he has also learned something called as humility yes accepting that he is not worthy to be called his son make me like one of your hired servants and verse number 20 says 
And when he arose and came to his father, this is how his, you know, people's, you know, when, 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 when their spirit comes to light, you will see their reactions are different. Their decisions are really different. You will see that there is something rejuvenated in them, in them or replenished with new thoughts and all that. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And he arose and came to his father, verse number 20. But when he still a great way of his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Why? Because every day the father was sitting by the window side. This is the way how I could imagine and watching that his son is going to come back. Although he allowed him for those punishments and for the tempter to, uh, to be at work and all that. But he had that confidence. Why? Because the image of God is inside you. Yeah. That's how the soul, the inner man functions. And he was watching, standing or sitting at the window side. And there he sees his son. Great way. You see, his father saw him and had compassion. And who ran? This guy never ran to the father's house. Probably he was very hesitant, maybe very shy, don't know how to face his father or also scared. Maybe his father would hit him, how to meet him. And he also thinks about his elder brother, what that fellow will tell. Now that elder brother will come. Actually, the parable of the lost son here, it is actually mentioned as the younger son. But many people miss to focus on the elder son. And that's exactly where I'm taking you through. We are analyzing from both the lives, right? And the son, no, sorry, sorry. And father had saw him and had compassion and ran. Father ran to him. That's the love of the father, beloved. And fell on his neck and kissed him. This is how heaven reacts, you know. When you come to repentance, no. All the 24 elders, they stand up and they rejoice. And the angels are rejoicing. And the father is rejoicing. And the son of God, Jesus is rejoicing. Holy Spirit is rejoicing. And the inner man, the soul, is also overwhelmed in joy. And you will feel that peace. Which money cannot buy. Which this world cannot offer. Which your promotions cannot offer. Which your new cars. How many of you are feeling so joyful when you get a new car? But you know what? That is only when you see that car parked in the parking area. But when you start driving it, you will be all terrified. Oh my goodness, which, which, which stupid fellow is going to come and you know, cause a scratch or an accident. accident. You will be all terrified. You will be driving very carefully. Yeah, That's why the materialistic deeds are not going to give you joy. It gives you happiness, which is temporary, not joy. Joy is permanent, eternal. Verse number 21, and the son said to him, because he is now very well versed with that script which he wrote, no? He's very, he did a lot of rehearsals also. This is exactly the dialogue I'm going to talk to my father. Now he opens his mouth. The son said to him, father, father, comma means you need to stop. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. He repeats the dialogue as is. <laughs> but the father said to his servants, verse number 22. Did you notice something here? Father did not even respond to his son. The way how God responds to your needs will be amazing, beloved. That's called as miracle. He will straight away get into action. He will not sit and advise you. He will not sit and yell at you. Did I not tell you? Not to go. What a stupid son. I shouldn't have given birth to you. What a waste of time and energy. That you not only took away my property, but you have almost burnt them to ashes. None of these came from the mouth of the father. Immediately got into action. That's called as the compassion of our loving father. Compassion. You know how the father responds? But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe. Best robe means from the spiritual perspective, you are being clothed in divinity. You are being given that royal priesthood. 1 Peter 2.9 says, yes, all things have passed away. You are new creation in Christ. How would others acknowledge you will be given that divinity? All that you do will be divine. Spiritual, holy, 
righteous, blameless, divinity, best robe, and put it on him and put a ring on his hand that denotes that you have the inheritance. You are part of God's inheritance. You are given that signet ring, right? Like how Pharaoh gave his signet ring to Joseph and he says, for namesake I will sit on the throne, but you are like that prince. And history says for 48 years after the death of the Pharaoh, it was Joseph and his wife Ashnath who ruled Egypt and they were, they took over the throne. God gave them the throne, not that they took over the throne, God gave them the throne because he became almost like his son, own son. He took that ring and he said, you are my inheritance. You have everything that I have. Probably father has his, his share, right? Probably he divided the shares into three halves. His share, his son's share and his elder son's share, younger son's. And he says, this inheritance belongs to you. Take it. You are my inheritor. Yeah. And then he says one more thing. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. That means what? Sandals on his feet talks about the protection that has been restored. For some time, protection was taken out. Because why? You had been, your petition had been forwarded to the devil's table. And the devil is a destroyer, devourer, stealer, liar and all that. No protection. God took away all the protection. Why? Because he needs to chastise you. That's exactly happened in the life of Peter, right? Jesus took away those protection. Let him deny three times. Let him be broken. Then that's when he will come back to his senses. God allows that. Now he restores the protection, sandals. And then you become the messenger of God, taking forth, taking forward his plans. Your spiritual duties you will continue to execute in style, implement in style. And then with that we will close. Verse number 23, with that we will close. My time is already up. And then he says, bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Which means the, all the days of your starvations, all the days of your failures, defeat are gone. God restores it. And you're going to enjoy the best of your prosperity. And then you become uh, the living witness or the living testimony to that word of God, Psalm 1-3. Those who shall meditate in the word of God day and night, whatever he shall does, it prospers. You live your life, you lead your life in prosperity. 1 John 3, 2 says the same. God bless you, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. Heads bowed on and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity. We appreciate you have taught us a lot what it is about the starting point, turning point. And when we come back to God, how are we going to receive that treatment? Yeah, and we have learned about your compassion, God. Thank you. Appreciate your teachings this morning. And bless my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Share this word of God. Be an instrument to share it with your friends, relatives, and families. Subscribe to our channel. Get access to our playlist. And may God bless you. Amen.